You're listening to the Health Coach Nation podcast. My name is Haley Rowe, and I'm a business coach for online health coaches who want to attract their ideal clients, stop feeling defeated by their never-ending to-do list, balance a healthy lifestyle with their growing business, and stop overanalyzing what everybody thinks of them so that they can confidently own their message and online presence. On this podcast, we dive deep into health information you can share with your clients, business strategy tips, and more. Let's get to it. Today's episode, I am interviewed by Jordan Rubin, the founder of the Enhance podcast, and you're going to be able to hear all about my journey, the struggles, the wins, going full time in my business. And I want to remind you to check out Jordan's podcast, the Enhance podcast, where this episode originated from. He is on SoundCloud, Spotify, all of the different platforms. And I hope you enjoy today's episode. Before we get started, I also want to let you know that this is the last chance to be entered to win prizes when you leave a written podcast review. So one of the things that you can now win, every person will win if you leave a review, my sales tracker. So my sales tracker is going to allow you to track your discovery calls, your conversion rate, your revenue, how many no-shows you get, things like that. So you can start to notice patterns, start to know your numbers, and have more certainty with your sales process in 2020. So if you want a copy of this sales tracker, you can leave a written review, take a screenshot of that review, and send it to me via email at info at Haley, H-A-I-L-E-Y, row, R-O-W-E, dot com, and you will get one copy of the sales tracker in January. So must submit your review by January. And I was going to say January 1st, but if you need a few extra days, let me know. Um, But send it over, and this will also enter you to win a $500 gift card to work with me or a free 30-day supply of organic chlorella. So I cannot wait to see your reviews and enjoy today's show. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to a brand new episode of the Enhanced Podcast. It's your host, Jordan Rubin. Today is day 24. It is officially Christmas Eve. We made it. We made it through the 24 days of Enhanced Podcast, an entirely brand new episode every single day. And of course, just like the other 23 episodes, I've got an amazingly talented guest on the show today. Her name is Haley Rowe, and she's a business and marketing strategist for health coaches who actually want to book clients they love, kill it with their online visibility, and overcome time and mindset barriers. So actually, she shares her business mindset and um, sales tips. She's got a free Facebook group. It's called Health Coach Nation Podcast. And the health coach, oh, sorry, the health coach Nason podcast. And she's got a Facebook group for that as well. And uh, she's been in the industry since 2010. So she's got about a full decade of experience and has also worked with business development, marketing for, you know, big name companies like Bulletproof, Energy Bits, Upgrade Labs, and more. She's got a bunch of certifications. And really, her big philosophy is by changing your thoughts, by changing your mindset and your habits anything is possible, which is a bold statement, but I guarantee she can back it up here. So um, Haley, what brought you on the Enhanced Podcast? It's so good to have you here. Um, Tell us a little bit about yourself. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, well, you pretty much nailed it. I um, am a coach for health and life coaches, and I've also worked with several service providers on booking clients consistently, hitting full-time income business um, in in their business. And um, I'm very excited to be here. Yeah, excited to have you on the show. So, um, you know, I think we want to hear a little bit more about your backstory. Like, you know, that's amazing. Like, she's basically a coach for coaches, which yeah. is pretty amazing, like being able to help other coaches. So, uh, you know, what got you into this industry? Like, you know, what kind of experiences growing up or like, you know, in the past Absolutely. decade or so? Yeah. Well, the first thing I would say is I started out as a coach, not for coaches. And I think that's important, um, especially when you're going to work with a business coach or marketing coach. Um, So I originally started out as a health coach in 2010. And I used to offer um, fitness programs and in-home personal training and had health coaching programs. 
And I realized that, and I actually used to go to bridal expos, all the stuff before social media, going to, to events and having a little table, <laughs> the old fashioned way, building my email list through those events. So I um, was very young when I started doing all this, I had to get legal guardians to sign for my, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and I um, just loved the process of growing and taking risk and learning sales. And so I was um, doing that for a while. And then I went off to college and I studied entrepreneurship and also continued my health coaching there and got more certifications. But one thing I realized after college, when I got my first job, what I thought would be my dream job, I was going to put coaching on hold for this job because it just seemed like everything I could possibly want. It was with a company I really loved. Um, it was with the same, it was like the parent company to one of my certification program companies and they offered me a unique opportunity and I get to wear many hats and I get the real startup experience. And it was amazing. It really was. I got to do so many different things. I got to be in HR. I got to do all the back end business stuff. I got to learn marketing. And one thing that led me to doing what I do today was the fact that I realized the coaching certification programs don't necessarily teach coaches how to market themselves, grow their business, scale, manage them, their own time and back end stuff. And I realized that I wanted to take the same things that I was learning working in the startup world and put it into a framework for coaches so that they could book more clients, scale their business, et cetera. And I didn't have the plan or know when I was going to do that. But eventually, the startup that I worked at ended up having a big, major halt. And they were going to need to take about six months to a year to regroup on, on a few things. They were behind on getting permits for things. And there was just a lot of messy um, things going on. And the entire team of, you know, 15 to 17 people got let go on one call. Oh, wow. And I realized, wow, this isn't up to me and this is out of my control. And I really want to go back to my coaching and do it different this time. And so I had the opportunity to kind of start fresh and go all in and had really no choice but to succeed. And not going to say that there wasn't many different detours on that road. There was plenty of side jobs working many different jobs at the same time. Um, while I was growing my coaching business, it wasn't an overnight success, but thankfully um, it has taken off and it's what I do now. That's perfect. I mean, that's, that's an amazing story. Like, you know, the ups and downs and then, you know, going to work for a startup and feeling like that's the dream, but, um, you know, kind of want to even backtrack a little bit more. So what made you like you start, so you basically started coaching independently before you turned 18 years old? Yes. Um, so I was always the theater nerd growing up and I realized I had to start in high school. I had to start turning things around and being healthy and moving my body. I realized that that was something I needed to start doing. And I started out by getting some group fitness certifications and teaching something called turbo kick, which is like a cardio kickboxing ladies workout. Um, and then I ended up doing more, getting more of my, like my certified personal trainer certification, my nutrition specialist certification, that kind of stuff and adding to what I was doing. Awesome. So like if someone's listening right now and they're interested in being a coach, like, you know, whether that's a health coach or, you know, anywhere in that coaching niche, like how important would you say it is to get those certifications? Would you say like that's an absolute necessity? Really good question. I think, and I'm going to get some, uh, what's the word? Backlash? <laughs> Maybe <laughs> some backlash. So, all right. If you're dealing with people's bodies and their health, I think it is kind of important to have a certification. However, has anybody ever asked me about my certifications? No. <laughs> Did I spend a lot of money on a business degree, my uh, certifications, all of the things? Yes. So my suggestion is, and here's the third point to take into account. Some coaches, they only feel confident and competent mm -hmm. and like they want to flaunt their stuff once they have a certification. So you have to 
it's ultimately up to you, but take all three of those things into account and know that A, it's always about your story and the results and the transformation that you can provide. And whether you have a certification or not, that's what people care about. B, if you're dealing with people's bodies, technically the right answer is you should have some kind of certification. And then the last thing is, what do you feel more, what will make you feel more confident? And I will tell you, Jordan, though, this is interesting because coaching, getting certifications for me did make me feel a lot more confident and knowing how to actually coach people, listen to them, um, be able to like lead the sessions, know how to let the client you know, like find that perfect balance between giving them suggestions and tactical strategies and also asking them really important questions that brings them to their own conclusion. There's like a balance there. And I've worked with coaches who don't have certifications. And I will say, I noticed that it was harder. It was like harder for me as the client to feel like I was being coached properly. And as somebody now who's working with more of a mentor, um, he doesn't have, I don't think he has certifications and I'm having a great experience. So it really just depends on the person. Uh, but I would say people who have certifications, no matter what, you're going to learn something from it and you're going to get better in some way, shape or form. So it doesn't hurt. However, here's the last thing that I think people do wrong. They think they need more and more certifications before they can start coaching and, and mm -hmm. making money and getting themselves out there. And that's the biggest mistake you could possibly make. I would have gotten less certifications and spent more money on my marketing, a business coach, all of that stuff, because many people don't think about that when they're getting their certification. Mm -hmm. And I would definitely agree with that last part, you know, just <clears throat> being in a college environment not too long ago, people do the exact same thing. Like, oh, I got this four year degree. Well, I don't quite feel qualified to go out into the workforce yet. So let me go to grad school, throw down another couple grand and, uh, you know, get your grad degree or get your PhD. And now all of a sudden you feel qualified, but you have no experience. You have no proven results. So no, I mean, especially as a business owner, that's key to be able to prove and show like, look, I've helped these people. So, you know, what's kind of the process someone's getting started, you know, maybe, maybe they got some certifications or they're planning on getting some certifications, you know, but then you go into the market, you go into the market, nobody knows who you are. How do you establish yourself as you know, an expert in that industry? Yeah, there's many ways. Part of it is being somebody who is willing to do the work to show that they're valuable. <laughs> mm -hmm. So um, I wasn't against doing free consults and little test groups that were cheaper than what they were going to be normally and all of that to get my credibility, to get testimonials um, that kind of thing. So I think it's important to be willing to put in the dirty work, uh, in the beginning to establish yourself and get, you know, feedback. Um, I also think to establish yourself as an expert, it's important that you come up with a really strong, clear niche and who you want to work with and exactly what you want to provide them with and have a super clear message. So many people, for example, especially in the online world, that's important. If you're a local person doing coaching, it, you could be a little more broad. I found people don't care as much because you're kind of like a big fish in a small pond, unless you live somewhere like Los Angeles and you're a health coach, then you got to be really specific. But you know, in the online world, it's really important to be willing to polarize yourself and, and you want people who would like, for example, if we were in a conference center and I said, everybody with the red hats come to this corner, that's the kind of way you want to be online. You want to be so clear about who you're for and what you do. And it's not to say that you can't work with people outside of your niche. Like for example, even though I'm a marketing and business coach for health coaches, I still work with some realtors locally. I still work with some service providers. They still come to me. They don't, are they're not afraid of me. In other words, which I think a lot of people fear, you know, I'm going to scare other people away, but I know I can help everyone. And I don't think you should be afraid of that. So don't be afraid of being specific. Get your, get your, you know, reviews, social proof, provide actual results for people. And then the third thing is do things that will establish your credibility, like pitching yourself to podcasts, like being guests in certain, you know, on certain, um, in certain publications and things like that.
Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you're interested in coaching, like definitely want to like replay that part of this podcast. That's like three solid tips that you can use to really establish yourself as a coach, which, you know, seems kind of difficult on the outside because there's so many coaches out there. What do I do? You know, you just got three ways, get those testimonials. I mean, when you get someone else to vouch for you and say, this person helped transform my life, this person helped and, you know, enhance my health that's priceless right there. That's another person vouching for you. So that's a great way to get started. I will say um, if they're really confused, if your audience is confused about how do I get craft my elevator pitch or my niche statement and who I'm, who I'm working with and what I'm doing for them, I have a free niche marketing training and five-star Instagram bio checklist at HaleyRowe.com. It's H-A-I-L-E-Y-R-O-W-E.com. And they can get that and it will guide them through coming up with their statement. Um, and if they want to even send that to me to get feedback, they definitely can to my email info at HaleyRowe.com. But one thing that I also want to mention about what you just said about testimonials, this week alone, I had one of my clients, um, I actually hung out with one of my clients who happened to be in town for a very short period of time. And we did a Facebook live together. And even though it, we didn't plan it, it was super like last minute, we based, we were at a outlet mall and we we're just making a video. And that video alone had like triple the amount of views as me when I go by myself. So it just goes to show you that when your clients can speak for you and what you do, it's so much more powerful, just like you said, than you constantly coming on and being like, I'm great. I'm awesome. Yay. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Anyone yeah. can say that. Exactly. But um, yeah, no, I mean, that, that's definitely true. You know, when, when you, it's, I mean, that's the kind of stuff they don't teach in those certification classes. They don't teach you how to establish yourself as an authority figure, how to establish yourself with some of the greats and just, you know, kind of, kind of penetrate and push your way into the industry. So, um, you know, mm-hmm. definitely some knowledge, definitely. Um, I think that was another tip that you just kind of subtly threw in there. You know, you can, you can check out Haley's free, uh, content on Instagram, but that's another great thing as a coach, like have a freebie to draw oh, people yeah. in to show you what you have to offer. Absolutely. Give value and show that you're a high quality person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So you're a health coach. And then you decide to go to, what made you decide to go to college, you know, after you're already establishing this business as a high school student? Yeah. So, you know, it was what everybody was doing. (laughs) Yep. Yep. I feel um, the same way. (laughs) It's just what happens. And at the same time, I don't think I was ready. I didn't believe in myself fully enough to start my, go all in on my, uh, you know, running a business, I had, I needed some time to figure myself out. And I think one of the biggest strengths any entrepreneur can have is to just know themselves really well. And in college, it was like my first time, obviously I I went to Los Angeles. So I was halfway, I I originally from Chicago. Um, So it was my first time in a new place with new people and people either, you know, thrive or crumble. And I'm a huge introvert and homebody. So that was a big step for me. It was, but I really chose to make it like, I'm going to try to crush this and I'm going to do all the things I can possibly do and get my hands on and experience everything. And I went to a school where my class sizes were like 30 people because I went to Loyola Marymount University, which is a smaller, um, more private, like, you know, more, it's just a smaller school. And I thrived. I loved the small community. I loved, uh, I taught fitness classes. I worked at the LMU gym. I trained the tennis team. I got Ty Lopez to come speak at one of my college classes. I went to conferences. I went to a TEDx event. I met um, some incredible entrepreneurs. I went to the entrepreneurship school. So it, it was my opportunity to just like, whatever, here we go. I'm going all in. Um, and I just loved it. So how'd you get, okay, I got to ask, how'd you get Ty Lopez (laughs) to come speak to your college class? Well, so I was at a conference, I believe it was the Bulletproof Conference. And uh, because, what? how did I, I used to listen to the Bulletproof podcast and I went to this conference and Ty Lopez was one of the speakers. And after his 
beach. He was in the lobby doing a uh, Instagram live or a, yeah, actually at that time, I think it was like Periscope or something. It was something not super cool anymore. Uh, and he was doing some live video and people were standing around him in a huddle and just um, trying to be on the video and he was answering their questions. And as soon as he was done, I, before I let him run away, I was like, tell him us, I'm, a, I'm an entrepreneurship major at LMU and I would love to have you come into my Paul Orfella class because I was in a class with the founder of Kinko's. I got to be in this really cool class. So I of course dropped his name. I was like, can we have you come into his class and speak? For these students and blah, blah blah and then he, uh his assistant gave me his email i followed up and we got him in so um i had a very short window to try and score that but it worked thank gosh yes wow yes see and that that's another lesson i just want to point out there like when you see an opportunity like look getting in ty lopez's instagram live or his whatever you called it that i haven't even heard of um mm -hmm. trying to get in that like that's one thing but actually following up on an opportunity and trying to think bigger and I think that's what you did mm -hmm. and you know if you meet someone like that it's all about can you do business with that person like are they going to help you out in some yeah. way and can you help them like exactly and, what is in it for them so even though Ty mm -hmm. Lopez that that wasn't a big offer for him <laughs> but I did yeah, drop the name of Paul Orfala who was the Kinko's founder so maybe they would think that was cool maybe he would think that was cool apparently um, he did I mean so, he, he, yeah, he came he down did. there for it he was great. Yeah. Wow. So let me ask you this. So as far as going into college, like, you know, other than your extracurriculars, obviously, you know, you got a lot of opportunity and I'm sure you really got outside your comfort zone there being in a, in a big city and then being able to, you know, connect with Ty Lopez and, you know, other people in the industry at these TEDx events. What do you think? Um, do you think that the education itself really enhanced your ability to, uh, you know, be a successful health coach and a business coach? You know, it's so interesting you ask that because like from a curriculum standpoint, like, you know, no, not really. Right. right. And, and all the things we learn in school, like why are we dissecting frogs and, you know, doing that Don't kind of stuff we kind of be learning, <laughs> learning like how to invest and how to write, like even do just practical stuff, like make ourselves a budget and stuff. So pay taxes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But Okay, so I actually have a different view though on college. College, I do feel like I learned important things. And part of it's probably because I went to, I majored in entrepreneurship and we got, we had so many guest speakers and real life, like being able to interview them and ask them questions. And we also had fake things where we had to make a fake business and like present it to investors and all this stuff and make, I mean, obviously it's nothing like the real world. You can't argue that you can't just say I got a major in entrepreneurship and now you're going to be like a successful business. Right. Owner. That's not real. You didn't actually do anything, but um, the kinds of things that we learned, like, for example, I even just like going back to that example about having a class with Paul Orfala, he that was one of the most realistic classes I've ever had in my life because he would put you on the spot and embarrass you if you didn't know what was going on in current events. On the first day, we had to walk in, shake his hand, and if we didn't do it right, if we didn't do it very uh, charismatically and committed and like touch his shoulder or something, <laughs> which is like one level up you can't just shake someone's hand. You have to touch their shoulder or something. Mm -hmm. uh, we had to go back to the back of the line and start over until we figured wow. out what we were doing wrong. So that's the kind of stuff that I, I loved about college. I do feel like I learned a lot. And um, now do I think that it prepared me fully for all the things that I ended up going through after college and had to figure out? No, but I think it's what you put into it. And the kind of, it, it's about, you know, being the kind of person who's seeking evidence and what can I take from this and what can I learn from this and how can I discharge the rest? That's not that important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I would definitely agree. You know, especially when you go in for something that like you went there because you wanted to increase your knowledge from, for entrepreneurship to start a business. I feel like a lot of people, uh, myself included, go to college because, oh, it's the next step. Just go do something, get a job and kind of go down go down that same path and you're spending a lot of money on that. But, you know, I mean, if you have the money covered, then, you mm -hmm. know, go out there and you can learn something, you know, meet some incredible people. So that's awesome that you did that. So after college, why did you decide? Well, tell me a little bit more why you decided to go to this, um, this startup instead of using your skills yeah. to go out and 
and start your own business. Do you think it was a, you know, a competence thing or? Yes. I think it was self-belief. I, I wouldn't know where to focus. I wouldn't know, you know, what to do. And I think it was part of me wanting to um, stay in LA and obviously sustain myself. So (laughs) right away. (laughs) Um, But also part of me was just not ready. I just wasn't not, and I never say, you know, I'm always the coach who says there's never a perfect time. You have to take the leap. You have to do scary stuff. You have to be willing to feel uncomfortable. You have to be resourceful and willing to figure it out. But I think that my belief in myself at that time, I just, I wasn't fully there. And I think it's really important from a mindset standpoint. Like I needed to do a little more personal development work internally before I felt fully ready to just do my own thing. Um, but one of the regrets that I do have when I did work there was putting my own thing completely on hold. I had dropped my blog. I dropped all the, I dropped it all because I didn't have, obviously my excuse was I didn't have time because I was working at the startup and they would really use me and I felt valued and I felt like I wanted to, you know, people please. And I, you know, I just let it go. But that was my biggest if I would have just kept a little bit of it going, a little bit of email growth, a little bit of SEO, you know, stuff going on, like it just would have been better to start out with when I got let go. So. Mm -hmm. But what do you think you learned? Like, I mean, obviously you learned some stuff while you were there, like, you know, whether it's business wise or life lessons, you know, what was your biggest takeaway from the, like, what were you there? Like, how long were you there? Yeah, not very long, about like six to eight months. So it was oh, like wow. a it was like a crash course in entrepreneurship. Now I did start working for for them a little earlier before I fully moved, um, just from virtually, so a little bit longer. But um, yeah, so that but then I worked for another startup after that, as I was starting my own business on the side. So it was not like I told you, it was not a uh, what's it called where it's just a straight line. It was not a linear path. It was it was all over the place. I did that for a while. Then I worked at another startup. Then I was doing like multiple side jobs. Oh, anyways. So yeah, it wasn't super long, but it was super crash course. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, for the most part, it's never going to be linear. Like it's never like that, you know, where they show you the the trajectory of like, you're going to make this amount of income and then you're going to grow like it's never like that. There's always ups and downs and uh, Absolutely. I'm sure you got to experience that. And anyone listening, you know, that's um, probably one thing you can take away from this is that, <clears throat> you know, you get that experience on someone else's, like when you did the startup, like, sure, mm-hmm. you know, it sucked at the end. Like, oh man, I just lost this opportunity, but you didn't lose your business. Like you got right. to basically get that experience on someone else's dollar until it crashed. Yeah. So, yeah, Would you recommend absolutely. that to someone like, you know, before they start a business to work for another business? Would absolutely. Be yeah. Find a mentor you could work for or, or, you know, offer them something. And, um, I, the other, I mean, I don't think in today's world, because you can hire a coach or consultant or a mentor or get a program, I don't necessarily think you have to do that anymore, honestly because you can just learn the crap, like the exact framework from somebody who's done it before, if you just are willing to pay them. So if going back to your college example, if you know what you want to do and you're positive and you know, you can do, you know, go straight to investing in your personal development, uh, like courses, coaches, mentors, et cetera, maybe college isn't, I don't know, maybe college isn't for you. I'm, but to, um, I forgot the question, <laughs> but I think you were saying, uh, is it, do you recommend working for a startup? Yeah, or like we're working for someone else, yeah. or I guess I could work for yeah. a mentor either. Yeah, you, you can't go wrong. And at the same time, it, nothing's permanent. You don't have to decide to do that for the rest of your life. And the last thing I would say about having to, um, or seeking opportunities to work with other people, um, is you don't, if you can, you can always learn like things that I did years ago that at the time didn't, I didn't think I was learning anything and didn't make sense ended up serving me long-term. Like for example, I did, um, acting classes, improv classes. I did, uh, so many auditions as an actress, like growing up too. And 
at this, I was terrible at acting and I felt really bad at it, <laughs> but I, I learned rejection. I learned feeling really uncomfortable. I learned having to memorize a script or an outline. I learned how to speak better. So even though I didn't end up doing that in my current day job, it did prepare me for doing things like going live and, you know, being okay with rejection and things like that. So just everything you do, if you pay attention enough, there's some way it's serving you and it can serve you. It's just a matter of you finding those, those things. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of people like to talk about like only do something you love. But I mean, you, you can't like in business, you got to do certain things that you don't oh, love, yeah. certain things that suck. But, um, you know, even doing that, even working for someone else, even if you really hate the job, you can find like one or two skill sets that you can learn from that job, you know, whether maybe it's uh, sales, organization, um, you know, using certain softwares, using social media, you know, you can learn that while you're there, whether you're working for a mentor, you're working for a startup or, you know, working in a partnership, something like Absolutely. that, you can still benefit that. So you finish with the startup, you go in, mm -hmm. you say, all right, I'm going to be Haley, the health coach again. So mm -hmm. what did you do differently this time to really like expand it to the point where you're able to, you know, be self-sufficient as a coach, like social media yeah. wise, sales wise, like what did you do? Yeah. I hit the wall after about six months of trying to figure it out by myself. So I had downloaded all the free trainings. I did, um, you know, I was trying to do everything all at once. I definitely had a case of like squirrel brain and not knowing how to manage myself. Like, Oh, that seems cool. I'll try that. Oh, I'll do that. There was no real, I was just shooting in the dark. And after about six months of that, I found a group program. And that was the first thing that I did. I implemented it and made all the money back and more. And then I got to the next level where I wanted to get a private coach. And then I got a private coach and then I got a mentor. So it's, it was kind of, um, it was more about, okay, so a few things ha had to happen. I got help and I invested, so I had skin in the game. Um, number two was I implemented the stuff that I was learning and I stayed really, really focused, laser focused on that. Three was I had to eliminate some of the switching costs, meaning I had several side jobs and I narrowed in on about two of them <laughs> instead of like, many. And that was helpful because it just freed up my brain space to focus on my business better and more efficiently. And then at the same time, I'm the same way like you, where I would interview entrepreneurs. I would just seek out the knowledge. If we didn't have podcasts and audiobooks, I don't think I'd be able to do this, honestly. I think if I could actually choose between college, even though I loved college and you've heard how awesome it was for me, and podcasts, Honestly, I would probably pick podcasts. It's just about what you implement and if you're able to be coachable and teachable. And um, so those were the kinds of things that had to change for me. And at the same time, um, just um, being in the game long enough. Some people, I think, expect it to just take off and, and you post a few posts and there's, you know, and all of a sudden I have clients. But I had to actually do the work of personally connecting with people, personally following up um, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. That's what I was talking about earlier, actually, is, you know, making sure that when you're getting started, you got to build some momentum and some consistency. So yeah. when you're getting started with your business and you don't get the results right away, a lot of people think, oh, I failed because I didn't get the results, but start looking at actually just doing the work as, as like you're checking the box, like, congratulations, you got up, and you posted on social media and you made some calls and you went to these meetings and these networking mm -hmm. events. Congrats. Keep doing that for 30 days, mm -hmm. regardless of the results. And then, you know, analyze yes. what you did, you know, I'm so glad you said that. Keep doing it until it takes off before you notice. Yeah. Because it's delayed gratification. And if you can give yourself like for me and my clients, we do our daily basics and everybody has, you know, everybody, every client's a little different, but overall it usually consists of, things like personal reach outs and, and connect, you know, your, your networking, keeping in touch with potential clients, following up with them. If they said they struggled with something and you made a video about it, sending them that video, like being very thoughtful as a person and staying connected with your audience. Another one of our basics usually is um, their content. So just making sure that they're picking one or two 
social media platforms to really focus and hone in on and connecting with that audience privately, but also posting quality content and sharing what they do and being the go-to person for X, uh, for example. And things like even the personal, like if you want to be better at time management and managing your own self as your own boss, one of my basics right now is like, no, just stop looking at social media unless it's for work or it's at the end of the day and you can do one scroll. Like give yourself boundaries because part of it too, being an entrepreneur I found is actually getting, if you could just stop doing certain things and, and ignore certain distractions and stay focused on the path you're on or the course you're in or the coach you're working with, you're going to be way better off than if you're allowing all this room for like, oh, I got to respond to this fire drill. Oh, somebody messaged me. I got to stop what I'm doing right now and go answer them. Or, oh, it's, I went up scrolling social media or this course looks cool and I'm dabbling in all these different things. That's not a good road <laughs> because I've mm -hmm. definitely done that in the past. Oh, same. That, is, that has been a struggle for me this year. I'll be completely honest with that. But, um, and it can get addicting thinking like you see someone with the Facebook ad and it's like, oh, drop shipping sounds cool. Oh, wholesaling yeah. sounds cool. And you go back and forth and then, well, what mm -hmm. are you actually doing? What are you actually becoming an expert in? And, uh, you know, I kind of want to touch on the subject of mentors. You brought it up like three times and I need to like, you know, we need to lock in on that. So someone, I feel like the biggest reason people are afraid to invest in mentorship is mm -hmm. because they're thinking, oh, what if I don't make my money back? Or, oh, what if I don't get the yeah. value or something like that? So when mm -hmm. someone's going to either look for a mentor and, you know, they're planning on investing, what are some really big tips that they can use to make sure that they reap the full benefits? Yeah, that's a really good point. And mentors and coaches, I kind of use them interchangeably, but some people would get really upset with me for doing that oh, because, no. because technically the definition of a mentor and coach is different. So for anyone listening to the replay, just know we're talking about investing in somebody who's further along than you, who you want to learn from, and maybe they have a coaching program or consulting program, or maybe they're technically quote unquote a mentor and you like sit and watch them do their thing on a more observatory basis or something like that. So anyways, I just didn't want to upset anyone listening. No, but, that's good to clear um, it up. I don't, the only reason why I, I, I don't know what I call myself because I think I do both things, but um, anyways, the point is investing in your growth. And if you are thinking about doing that and you want to make sure you get the ROI, one thing I would highly, highly, highly recommend is Googling Dan Sullivan's impact filter and Dan mm. Sullivan's experience transformer. And both of those things give you questions that will ask you what you want to get out of the experience and how you need to show up to make sure you get a return on your investment. And the other thing that you can do is, first of all, know if you want to be a coach or a service provider and you're being cheap and you're not investing in yourself, how the heck can you expect somebody else who you're asking to invest in you? How can you expect them to do that? You need to become a more valuable, resourceful, strategic, strong business person so that you could serve your clients better. And then you're worth them. Then you can feel more confident and competent in asking others for a sale. Um, so that's really important. The third, the other thing that I would say is just know that it is what you put into it, but it's also doing your due diligence on the coach. So you have to feel, I've worked with great people and I've worked with people who, and not necessarily all coaches, but like even service providers I've hired for projects. I've worked with some people who I, you know, had to, now I have to question my trust. So it's important that you connect with the person before you hire them. You have a discovery call or a call with them personally if they're so big that you have to speak to their sales team, then that's fine too. But just make sure that you don't um, just do something blindly. And um, yeah, those would be some of the criteria that I would follow if I were you. Mm -hmm, definitely. And kind of on the subject of sales too, you know, I feel like a lot of people, whether it's coaching or, um, you know, just starting a business in general, a lot of people are terrified of selling or selling themselves because they feel like, Oh, uh, <clears throat> what if somebody just thinks all I care about is taking their money or like, you know, things like that, that we've been taught, like mm -hmm. sales is slimy because, you know, yeah. people have grown up that way. So, um, you know, exactly. what are some things that some people can do to, 
you know, get at least competent enough to be able to promote themselves properly? Yes. Um, first, Jordan, one of the saddest things that I have to hear on calls with people is that they come to me and they say, well, I did so-and-so's program and it was so terrible. I was just a number. Nobody ever called on me. I didn't get anything that they said they were going to give me. That's one example. Or I invested X dollars in X person and all they did was send me voice notes of what they felt like talking about that day and were just cheerleaders or motivational, but gave me no tactical strategy, no, no, no strategic thinking, no tools in my toolbox. It was like, you know, motiv motivational cheerleader, which is what I don't need. So I've heard all these stories. And so I want to say, I understand why people fear sales. And I understand why people are hesitant to buy things because there's people who are ruining it for everybody else. But at the same time, we can't let that, we can't penalize ourselves from getting support that we could really benefit from and use and make it up to us to, you know, make that return on the investment. And we can't just penalize ourselves forever. So when it comes to actually selling your stuff and not having an icky mindset about sales, I actually have a course called the superhero sales method, but if um, in a free sales journal, which maybe I'll have to send you, I don't know if you have show notes, but everybody can get the free sales journal. Um, but when it comes to sales, few things. One, you have to know that selling and is serving and closing is caring. So what I mean by that is when you have free people, I call them free vampires, they just soak up all your free stuff and get everything they can from you for free. Usually they never end up implementing, doing anything with their lives. They're keeping, you know, looking at the free stuff. And when somebody's invested, it's very different. Those who pay, pay attention. Mm -hmm. So when I say closing is caring, it's very important to um, understand that your job as a coach or consultant, if you're listening to this, is to hold your clients accountable to their desires. Meaning, if they say, if your client says they really want to solve X, Y, and Z problem, and you know you can solve it for them, and they said that they've been struggling with it for seven years, and they said that they feel so embarrassed and shamed around this topic, and they've poured their heart out to you, and then when you get the slightest objection or concern like, oh, that's a little expensive for me, or, oh, I don't know if it's the perfect time, or, oh, I need to ask my ha husband. You don't just say, okay, bye, and that's what most people do. And that's, that's not the way you solve problems. And you're not actually helping that person when you let them get a, like, do nothing, if that makes sense. That makes and, perfect sense. Uh, yeah. So, so I don't view sales as like, I need to close the sale. I need to make the cash. It's more like I am a coach. It's my job to actually coach someone through their limiting beliefs, coach someone through what's not working, help them find the actual solution and make sure that the trust is there so we can deliver the result. And so i that has helped me so much on my discovery calls as opposed to just being like, okay, bye, giving up on you. And, and I don't give up on people if they truly want something. Now, if they don't actually want what you have to offer, that's one thing. And, and let them be honest with you and tell you, I don't like you or I don't like what you offer. I, it's not what I want. I'd much rather have somebody tell me that than, oh, I need a, it's the price, but it's really not. It's really them just not liking me or something like, I'd much rather have them say, I don't want to work with you personally. <laughs> right? mm -hmm. And I've had people say that to me before and that's fine. That's a, not a fit for everybody. But um, so that's the first thing is just work through the concerns. That's your job as a coach is to coach them through their troubles. Um, the second way to view sales in a better way. Well, let me think. <laughs> I, got, I got off on a rant on that. Um, I think it's important to believe in what you're selling. And if you don't believe in it yet, you have to ask, who do I need to become to be able to feel truly stellar about this. What does my program need to deliver? How can I do that? If I was only gonna get paid for to get somebody a certain result, what result, what 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 is that result? And what are the bare bones of my program that I need? Not just fluff. Because sometimes I think people feel weird about promoting their program because they're like, I don't really know if this will actually work. Right. <laughs> so do whatever you have to do to feel confident that it's going to work. Test it on people, give it away in a beta program at a discount for once and, and run through it. Um, give a guarantee of some kind and work, make sure that you guys work together until that guarantee is achieved. Anything like that.
Man, that's some incredible knowledge right there. Like anyone who wants to be a coach, like this is a must listen episode. So if you're here right now, you're getting some amazing knowledge. You're going to want to write this stuff down and actually implement it. Some amazing stuff. Thank Thanks you. for sharing. So um, now obviously as a business owner, like you've already achieved success in like coaching coaches, showing them through the process. So what's kind of your goal, like over the next year to really enhance that? Because you don't want to stay at the same place. You never know as a business owner, you, you always want to be one step ahead. So, you know, what's kind of, you know, your goals and some challenges that, uh, you know, you're looking to overcome in the next year. Yeah, I definitely want to double down on the things that are working and stop distracting myself with the things that aren't working as much. So for example, I'm having a new approach to content. I, I've done a lot of stuff that just has been, um, let's call it, I love your stuff, but then not converting. And that's how I started out my 2019, um, where people would love my stuff, but it wasn't converting. So I'm changing the way I'm doing content a little bit to be more compelling, um, addressing their limiting beliefs, um, pre, the pre-framing required to be strong, stronger with my marketing. I'm also, my goal in 2020, one of them is to repurpose all the stuff that I've done that hasn't been effectively put out and seen. Um, so I'll be, I would like to have my teammate help me with that. That's a big thing. Cause I don't want to spend, I want to spend all my time on calls with, cl with my clients and on calls with with new clients. That's where I want to be spending the most of my time, not on content creation and repurposing. So that's one of my goals. Um, my other goal is to continue just to improve. I'm always improving and adding things to my current programs. Um, and just this is going to be because last year I launched my group program and was I'm, I was setting I've been setting up a lot of things in, uh, in making my funnel better doing a lot of things on the back end this year is going to be more of the year where I can really just leverage all the stuff that I've been so busy creating and um, yeah so it's more of it's actually a year of less but better <laughs> um, that is my goal for the new year mm, yeah I mean less work but more, uh, more output basically. So you can, you know, spend your time scaling. And, uh, you know, I think that's definitely a good skill at a lot of, you know, how you go from the, you know, being self-employed, like you're familiar with that chart where it's like employed, self-employed mm -hmm. business owner, and then investor, like your goal is to go from self-employed to more of a business owner where you're doing more delegation, where you're like, you know, on the top mm -hmm. of this system and, you know, helping the system grow rather than just doing all the dirty work. At the mm -hmm. bottom. So, uh, no. yeah, and I'm still willing to get my hands dirty and do the dirty work. Don't get me, I will always be that way in my business. But, um, but yes, to summarize what you're saying, yes, <laughs> awesome. And I know you were asking about this question at the beginning, so I want to go ahead and ask you. I've asked like most of the people I've brought on the podcast. So, basically, one of my mm -hmm. mentors from this year, Nehemiah Davis, he invested fourteen thousand dollars in one mentor. So you know we're talking about you know here talking about like two to three thousand dollar courses. He invested fourteen thousand dollars, and all he got was three forty five minute phone calls with this person. That's like less than two hours, a little more than two hours total. And he mm -hmm. said it was one of the best investments he's made all year. It really helped him get his mindset right, get his skill set right, and help really grow his business. So. If you could choose anyone, you know, anyone alive today, like you don't have to pay the 14000 you just choose anyone alive today to be your mentor. Mm -hmm. You only get three 45-minute phone calls with them. Who would it be? And, you know, how would you spend the time on those calls? Yeah, so I have stuck between two people. And I think what I would probably choose is, I've mentioned him before already, Dan Sullivan. I feel like he's my wise grandpa and I love him. <laughs> he has a program called strategic coach. He helps tons of entrepreneurs um, learn how to not only like run their business, but run their life. And he teaches you how to think. So I would want to sit with him and talk about all the flaws in my business, <laughs> how I can um, secure my business better, um, how I can, overcome he he went bankrupt and got divorced on the same day he had a rough he's gone through some rough stuff too so i would mm -hmm. definitely want to ask him about how he got through all that so 
Dan Sullivan would be my man. And then if I had to pick, if I could pick two, I would probably say Madonna as my second option <laughs> because I think she's so disciplined and truly cares about what she's doing and the fountain of youth. <laughs> So I would want to sit with her and talk about how she's so disciplined, how she has such a passion for what she does, um, you know, things like that. Definitely. You know, that that's how you, that's how you do mentorship the right way. If you get to choose a big name, like go for it and, you know, get as much as you can soak up as much of that information as you can. And, uh, yeah, that'd be a solid way to go about it. So appreciate you being on the podcast. We're going to go ahead and wrap it up. Um, you know, anything else you want to leave for the uh, listeners, you know, where people can follow you and, you know, tap yeah. into more of what you have to offer. Yeah. Well, thank you again for having me. And um, I'm on Instagram at Haley, H-A-I-L-E-Y underscore row, R-O-W-E. My website's Haley Rowe.com, H-A-I-L-E-Y R-O-W-E. And the one thing that Again, join the Health Coach Nation Facebook group, listen to the podcast. I have so much free stuff on my website. It's crazy. Um, but one thing I would suggest or, or offer to your audience is I have one question for them that will predict whether or not their coaching business will survive and thrive in 2020 or if it will not do so hot. And the question has nothing to do with your niche or how much money you've made so far or you know your number of followers, or your cool factor, or social media. Um, and so I really wanna share this question with your audience and see if they're thinking about this one thing. And it's not about me either as a coach, it's, it's different. So it's not gonna be, do you have a coach? It's not the question. So if you want to connect for that call and claim your spot, I'm offering it to your listeners, of course. And um, they can email me at info at Haley, H-A-I-L-E-Y, row, R-O-W-E dot com, and I'll send you a calendar link to book a call. Or you can just get in touch with me anywhere, message me, however it's easiest for you. Oh, so it's a mystery question. You find out on the call. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, ah. and just mention the Enhanced podcast so that I know um, that Jordan's Team Jordan sent you. Yes, definitely do that. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, no, I definitely appreciate you getting on the podcast today, really dropping some knowledge. Like if you listen to this episode and you really feel like this information is going to benefit your business, it's going to really help you enhance your life in 2020, please be sure to share this with someone else. Like this is free content that people can use and really benefit themselves and others and other groups. So definitely be sure to share this and subscribe to the enhanced podcast because we got so much more available, so much more coming. Uh, so much more great content that's really going to help you get to the next level. So uh, thanks again, Haley, for joining us. And uh, we'll see you guys Thank next you. time for the next episode of the Enhanced Podcast. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Be sure to get your free gift over at HaleyRowe.com by joining my email list. And remember, you can always connect with me and other health coaches in the Health Coach Nation free Facebook group where I post trainings and videos on how to take your health coaching business to the next level. Can't wait to connect with you. Have an awesome day.